Hi there, in today's video I'm taking a look at the two best plunge saws on the market, Maffel's MT55 and Festool's TS55. That's coming up next. And welcome back. I want to be clear from the start that I'm not going to tell you which of these two saws is best because what's best for you will depend on many factors, probably different factors to what's best for me. But towards the end of the video I will tell you why I bought what I did and what I would probably buy now if I was in this uh, starting out and in the market for a high-end plunge saw. Now the Festool TS55 I'm using today is my own and the Maffel MT55 I have here is a demonstrator that's been loaned to me by the fine folks at ProTrade and thanks so much to Alan and Horace for helping out with that. Uh, any prices quoted in this video are taken straight from the ProTrade website and there are links in the video description below to these saws on ProTrade's site. Let's start with a quick overview of these two. They're both top quality plunge saws and they are the most expensive plunge saws you can buy. Maffel traditionally being the more expensive here in the UK, usually by a factor of around 100 quid or so. But that difference has shrunk recently to less than 25 with the Festool coming in the full set with rail clamps and a bag at £611 including that and the equivalent Maffel is 635 Now looking at the specs these two saws are very similar but different. They do look similar, they are a similar weight, marginally heavier on the Maffel, and they perform similarly. So why would you choose one over the other? Well, let's get the lights on and take a closer look. Now, one of the significant differences between these two systems are not the saws themselves, but the guide rails that they run on. Festool patented this guide rail pattern with the cut through rubber splinter guard strip in 1981 and it's become the standard pattern for guide rails. The Maffel, like all track saws or plunge saws, as far as I'm aware, will run on these standard Festool pattern rails with the removal of a dingus in the base plate, but the reverse isn't true. The Maffel's rails are proprietary to Maffel. I believe they also make the rails and some other parts for Bosch for their plunge saw, but the Maffel rails are a different design, arguably better for a few reasons. First of all, the T-slot for clamping the rail is much slimmer, which means you can get a clamp much closer to the splinter guard, which makes clamping narrower workpieces easier. There's no upper T-slot though, like you find on the Festool rails, so no Maffel accessories like parallel guides, as far as I'm aware, and harder to attach DIY sets onto the rail if you had the inclination. The splinter guard is different too, where Festool's is a simple rubber strip held on with double-sided tape, Maffel have a carefully profiled strip that slides into the edge of the rail. This means that you don't get the peeling splinter guard problem that Festool rails are prone to, but conversely you can't do the old trick of peeling it off and edging it out to extend the life of the rubber strip. And of course, the profiled splinter guards are only available from Maffel. And finally, the Maffel system for joining rails together is so much better. Festool uses a pair of simple metal bars that fit one up and one down in the T-slots and are held in place with small and kind of fiddly little grub screws that frankly are prone to falling out. The Maffel connector is a much, much better design. It's face up for starters and requires no special tools and doesn't ding the rail when you tighten it up like the grub screws do. It's self-aligning and it's absolutely rock solid like a single continuous rail. In fact, Maffel are so confident of this joint they don't actually sell a long rail, whereas Festival will supply many lengths all the way up to five meters long. As I mentioned earlier, both saws come with a 48 tooth blade as standard and access for blade changes is pretty easy on the Festool. Flip the lever, plunge the saw and it locks in place with the spindle locked automatically as well. The Maffel takes this a step further though. Push a button, flip a lever and the whole side of the saw opens up for super easy access with the spindle locked and the power cut automatically as well. Perhaps more importantly, that fully enclosed side cover complete with rubber gasket should also improve dust collection and I'll be testing that out shortly. Elsewhere on the Maffel, the depth scale can easily be flipped around to allow for off-rail cuts, whereas the Festool has two separate markers permanently on show. To tip the saw over for bevel cuts, the Festool has front and rear locking knobs that work independently of each other whereas the Maffel also locks front and rear, but only uses a single front locking knob for this action. On the Maffel, if you need to make a scoring cut in veneered or laminated boards, it's easy to engage with a flick of a switch, and equally easy to disengage afterwards to make your full pass. One thing the saw does is that after the scoring cut, the blade moves out by a tenth of a millimetre to further reduce the chance of chipping. I've got to be honest, I'm in two minds about this. I'm not totally convinced it's necessary, and I don't really want to potentially introduce a hairline of visible chipboard if I'm cutting, say, MFC. 
The Festool has a riving knife, but there's no physical or mechanical anti-kickback in either saw. Festool will sell you a little anti-kickback stop that you attach to the rail if you feel you're making a cut that carries the risk of kickback. And Mathel have a system where the motor speed is constantly monitored, and if it senses a shift in speed, like the blade beginning to bind, for example, then the power is cut to the motor fast enough to prevent kickback. And it's this system that Mathel says is good enough not to need a riving knife. Certainly I'm not aware of any long-term Mathel user, and I do know quite a few who've experienced kickback, or even had the saw cut out to prevent it. If you're an experienced Mathel user and have had this happen, then do let me know down in the comments, as I'd be interested in hearing about the circumstances. Alrighty, I'm going to make a couple of quick test cuts on this, just to uh, compare and contrast. I'm not going to do the full depth rip cut or anything, because, you know, honestly, if you... If you don't think a 1400 watt motor with a thinner blade is going to outperform a 1200 watt motor, then you're not really paying attention. And if that's something you do regularly, then swap the standard Festool blade out for a 28 tooth universal blade, which is what I used to do when I did more of that kind of work, and it'll rip kitchen worktops or fire doors all day long. What I do want to do though, which I am curious about, is this scoring cut where the blade shifts over by a tenth of a millimeter. I'm I want to see if that really makes a difference to the quality of the cut and if it makes a difference to the finished board. It sounds to me like that's an engineer's idea rather than a woodworker's idea. Uh, so I want to give that a try. And the other thing I am curious about is the dust collection. I want to see if that fully enclosed blade makes a difference to dust collection. I am mildly fanatical about dust collection, dust extraction, because I did do a lot of work in customers' homes, people's houses. So... Good dust collection is very important if you can work in the room that you're working in rather than taking everything outside to cut it. So we'll start with the uh, scoring cut test. And I've got some really sort of cheap and nasty MFC and we'll give that a go. Uh, <laughs> see, how, see how this does. Okay, so far so good. Uh, I've just, uh, I'm just going to do the same thing with the Festool saw. Um, it's not going to be a true comparison test, to be honest, because I've had to swap blades out. This Festool blade I've got, I don't have a, a fresh one, a new one to put in, and that is a brand new Makita, uh, Mafel blade. Um, the one I've put in, in fact, is, has done a few miles as well, but it's definitely done a few miles less than this one. So I am expecting to get a little bit of chipping on it, but it's just going to be interesting to see the difference on the Festool between doing a scoring cut and not, I think, uh, chipping aside. So let's uh, just quickly do that now and we'll see what we get. Then we'll get a proper comparison between the, between the two. All right, uh, we'll leave that there for now. Uh, it seems like a good time to have a, a quick break. Uh, I'll be back in a couple of seconds. All right, here's what we've got. Uh, we've got the Mafal cuts, so straight cut and straight cut wayside, scoring cut and scoring cut wayside. And we've got the Festool uh, impromptu scoring cut where I just hold it up a bit uh, and the scoring cut wayside and the straight cut and the straight cut way side. Scoring cuts, absolutely superb on the Mafel. No, no question about it. Best cut, you know, without, without a doubt. My impromptu scoring cut, where I just hold the first all up out of the way, is also really, really, really good. There's a teensy little bit of chipping in a couple of places. Uh, as I say, it's, it, that blade's done a few miles and I would expect it to be, well, I know it can do a perfect cut just by holding it that way. On the waist side of the scoring cut, the Mafel's not great actually. This isn't nice quality 
MFC by the way, this really cheap and nasty furniture panel that is very prone to chipping, but hey, we don't always get to choose what we have to cut, right? Uh, and there is quite a bit of chipping on the waste side of the scoring cut. With the Festool, there's, there's still some, but nothing like as much. In fact, I'd say uh, the waste side cut on the impromptu scoring cut with the Festool is almost as good as the cut that was under the splinter guard. Uh, the straight cut with the Mafel is uh, pretty good. Again, just a teensy, teensy little bit of chip out on there, and the waste side is noticeably worse. Much more frequent chip out on that. Uh, and the same goes with the Festool as well, to be honest. Uh, noticeable fine chipping on the straight cut uh, and on the waste side as well. Where it's going to get interesting, though, is what I want to do next. I want to clamp these up and see if that tenth of a millimeter shift over actually makes a difference between an impromptu scoring cut or a straight cut with the Mafel and the Festool against that proper scoring cut. So I'm going to do that now. I'll be back with you in a second. And we'll start with the Mafel uh, straight cut, not the scoring cut. Let's get that in there. It's clamped up nice and tight. There's a teensy little bit of chipping in there, but it really is not bad at all. Um, I'd have no problems at all in using that uh, straight off the saw like that. No, you know, absolutely no, no problem. Uh, nice and straight and true. That's the uh, Mafel straight cut with a stock blade. Uh, the blade is pretty much brand new. Now moving on to the uh, Festool straight cut. I did say this blade's not great and you can see there's a little bit more chipping all the way along that edge. I know with a fresh blade I can get a very clean cut with that but it's not bad at all. I've seen a lot worse off other saws at other times <clears throat> uh, and I'd be perfectly happy to put that into somebody's house. No problem at all with that one. With the impromptu scoring cut uh, this is where I literally just sort of jam my, I've mentioned this technique in other, other videos before, I literally jam my hand under the saw to stop so it only plunges you know, a couple of mil. Uh, that's worked out really, really, really well. There's a tiny little bit of a chip in a couple of places, but for the most part that is absolutely, you know, as close to perfect as I would expect to get uh, from any saw, to be perfectly honest. Uh, again, very, very happy putting that in, into somebody's house. And frankly, that's exactly what I've been doing for the last you know, 15 years, however long I've owned these Festool saws. Uh, that's basically what I've done. Uh, where I need a really, really, really good edge, then just do a shallow scoring cut. Literally just jam my hand in there to stop it plunging all the way down. Uh, and taking a pass at it, and then do a second cut all the way through. Uh, the, the Mafel scoring cut, on the other hand, I mean, let's let's start with the positives. That melamine edge is absolutely perfect. It is absolutely pristine. But look at the state of that gap. Um, you know, that's that's more than a hairline. I I wouldn't be happy, personally, leaving a gap like that. And you can actually see at the end here, particularly clearly, where that scoring cut stopped where the blades sort of shifted over by, you know, supposedly a tenth of a millimetre. That looks more than a tenth to me. Ah, so that's, that's, that's problematic for me. I wouldn't be happy leaving an edge like that in a customer's wardrobe, for example. So whew, that's, that makes things difficult in terms of decision making later on, I think. Again, I can't express this enough. This is really cheap and nasty furniture board, very prone to chipping, and that is an absolutely flawless, uh, the only flawless cut that we've got on all out of all of them. And yet we've got that little hairline all the way down because of this shift in the blade out. I wish you, I wish, I wish you could switch that off. But as far as I'm aware, there doesn't seem to be a way to do that. Um, so kind of disappointing in that regard. I mean, really, really, really impressed by the quality of the cut, but kind of disappointing with the quality of the finish, if you see what I mean. Mm. Okay, so uh, dust collection test. 
So I'm just going to make five cuts on a piece of MDF, about three quarters of the way through, uh, and we'll see how much dust gets collected and how much escapes onto our delightful opened out bin bag here. We'll start with the Mafel as that's nearest, and then we'll do the Festool and uh, compare the two. So dust collection on the MAFL, overall very good. Very little escaping to the side, obviously, because we're not cutting all the way through. More happening to the front with these kind of cuts, but, you know, nothing you wouldn't expect, to be honest. Very contained, generally. And, you know, uh, very good. Pretty much exactly what you'd expect of this kind of thing. So I'm going to repeat that test with the uh, Festal saw and we'll see if they're broadly comparable or if one's better than the other. Fairly obviously that's only a very quick and rudimentary test, but I think it's fairly conclusive that the Mafel does have better dust collection because of that enclosed blade and the Festool. Obviously, you know, you've got a <laughs> hole in the side of the case. Uh, that's going to let some dust through. And of course, like most people, what I do is put a piece of tape over that. In fact, Festool will sell you this delightful <laughs> abomination. Yes, I did buy this. Give me a break. I was young at the time. Uh, uh, this thing just uh, not more trouble than it's worth uh, but a piece of tape over that hole or you can some enterprising guys make some little 3d printed ones uh, which does the job pretty well um, but without that out of the box as it were uh, there's no doubt that the Mafel has better dust collection interestingly I think there's probably less to the front of the cut with the Festool but more much more to the side uh, fairly obviously all around here. Um, there are very clear lines where the boards were, whereas we didn't get that so much with the Mafel. So, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of where we are. Let's uh, give that a little bit of thought, and we'll come back to that in a second. So there we are. Both saws are fully featured, similarly priced, and similarly spec. As I mentioned earlier, the Festool does have a bit of a reputation especially in 110 volts, to be a little bit underpowered. But in 15 or 16 years of using one professionally, I've never really found that to be an issue unless I was being lazy and not swapping blades. As I said earlier on, when I was doing a lot more of that kitchen worktop and ripping down fire doors work, I used what Festool called a 28 tooth universal blade, and that took rip cuts in its stride without any noticeable loss of quality of cut when making regular cuts in MDF or birch ply. That said, there's no denying that Mafel's combination of a slightly beefier motor and thinner blade means that it can power through most things, ironically, without needing that super fast blade change. Now I said at the start of the video that I'd tell you why I chose the Festool system over the Mafel, and the answer to that is simple. I could buy one. I know it sounds ridiculous today, but 15 or 16 years ago, when I was looking at starting to put together some proper tools, getting your hands on this gear was much harder than it is now. And the simple fact was that back then, I could just about convince somebody to sell me a Festool saw, but I had almost no chance of getting my hands on a Mafel. Throw in a significant price difference, and it was an easy decision to go with Festool. But that was 15 years ago. Fast forward to today, and that decision is much harder to make, much more personal and much more subjective. 
For me, after 15 years or so in the Festool system, I know I would really miss the plug-it cord. Yes, I know you can retrofit a plug -tail, pigtail plug-it, but it's not the same as having a socket on the saw and it almost certainly voids your warranty. That said, as much as I love my Festool saws, I'm struggling to find a reason why I wouldn't buy the Mafel. The saw's great, the price is as near as makes no difference, identical to the Festool here in the UK, and ha it has things that the Festool doesn't, like the scoring option and demonstrably better rail joining. If I didn't have 15 years of Festool plug-it cord muscle memory, then I wouldn't know what I was missing. I do wish you could switch off that slight blade twitch on the scoring cut, but the vast majority of my work is painted or veneered, not NFC, so less of an issue for me, but one that I think I could live with. A different story, of course, if your work is mostly NFC, and if that's what you do and you have the Mafal, do let me know in the comments down below if it's ever been problematic for you. So there we are, a red letter day when I choose Mafal over Festool, though obviously I won't be getting rid of my Festool because, you know, it's always good to have a backup. That's it for this video, though. Uh, don't forget to subscribe for more weekly workshop adventures. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you next time. Take care.